when we look at this, what we're comparing is the spacing between the lines. Notice we have this is the spacing here compared to the spacing here. And so what we're looking at is the equation is um, for a diffraction grading is that D sine theta is equal to N lambda. And this is sort of your N equals 1, N equals 2. Here's N equals 1, N equals 2. So we can see that our theta is bigger here in this one because it's spread out more, which means that our D is smaller. And so that means that if we have a smaller D, that means a smaller, what that really means is a smaller spacing. So that means more, which means more lines um, per millimeter. So that means this one is the 1,000 lines per millimeter. And this one is the 500 lines per millimeter. You can calculate the D if you want, right? D would be this 1 over the 500 or 1 over 1,000 in millimeters. So this is 1 over 500 millimeters, and this D is 1 over 1,000 millimeters. So you can see, in fact, that that's a smaller value. Um, to determine the type of optical element we have here, um, we need to first say that this is an inverted image. So inverted, that means that um, our magnification is less than zero, which means our image distance is greater than zero because magnification is equal to minus image distance over object distance. And so that means that this is a real image. So real image um, because it's inverted, and also that the image is on the correct side of the element, so that means we've got a mirror because this is the positive side for a mirror. And then that means we must have um, a concave mirror because that's the one that gives us this kind of image, and we can also know that our object is further away than the um, Let's try that again, further away than the um, focal point. So we can actually say this goes here and comes out at equal angles, and then that can kind of tell us where our focal point must be. So that is going to be our focal point. But it is a concave or converging. Okay, so for this thin film, um, this is these two waves reflecting off the front surface and the back surface are adding together, so this is constructive interference. And what we found from working with the simulation is that if we want destructive, then we take the film uh, times 2 is a way to get destructive interference. So whatever this value is, we double it. Or it could other multiples as well. Um, this is a diffraction grading that's showing a rainbow of colors. We have the, um, this is the red end, and this is the violet end, and the purple end. And the question is, what are the angles? So we're just saying D sine theta is equal to n lambda. In both of these, this is just n equals 1 because it's the first um, spot. Um, it's just different when we're looking at violet light, or purple light, and red light. Um, so when we put that in, we've got our d is 1 over 500, and that would be in millimeters. So then that gives us 0 0.002 millimeters, and then we want to be in meters, so which is, of course, 2 times 10 to the minus 3 millimeters, and that would, when we convert it, that becomes 2 times 10 to the minus.
six meters. Um, then we just put in our wavelengths um, in this equation and we have two for the purple, we have two times 10 to the minus six, that's our D. Sine theta is equal to one times our lambda for our violet, which is 400 times 10 to the minus nine meters. This is where we find out if we did our units right. If we're trying to find the arc sine of something bigger than one, then we have a problem. So if sine of theta equals um, 400 minus nine, equals 0.2, so that gives us a theta of 11.5 degrees for violet, and then if we do the same thing for red, 2 times 10 to the minus 6 is To design a lens for this um, situation, we want to have a real image so the object's actually going to have to be upside down so that the image can be right side up. Slides actually are put in upside down, but that's okay. Um, and so we have then um, a situation where we want to have something that shows up here like this and then gets really big. So that's not really 10 times, but something like this. This is our setup. And so our, the information that we have is, so this would be real, so it's going to have to be a converging lens. The information that we have is that the magnification is equal to 100. It's actually going to have to be minus 100 to be a real image. And that this is a distance 10 meters away. So we have the image distance is equal to 10 meters. And so we have magnification is equal to minus image distance over object distance, or our object distance is equal to minus our image 10 meters over our magnification, and our magnification is minus 100, so our object distance is minus 0.1 meters, 10 over 100. Um, plus, because we put in a minus magnification. If you found a negative value for your object distance, that's a good sign that your um, signs are off because your object distance is going to be positive in our, in the way, in the convention that we're using in our sign convention. Once we have that, we have the object distance and the image distance, then we can actually find the focal length. So you can say 1 over image plus 1 over object equals 1 over the focal length. So you put in 10 meters here, you put in 0.1 meters there, and you get a focal length that is basically um, 10 uh, centimeters, almost this distance. Um, so you get you get a focal length of 0 0.099 meters. So you're really close to the focal length here. So this and um, yeah, there's your focal length there. Okay, so for this last one, light as a ray, uh, as a photon or a ray, and sometimes as a wave. Um, so when it, we talk about light traveling in a straight line, we're really talking about bouncing off of mirrors and lens. When we're looking at the wave nature, when we must explain light as a wave, then polarization is one situation because it's made up of then waves of the electric field, sort of explain what's going on. Um, and then uh, interference phenomena. So you could use the example of diffraction spreading out of waves, or you could use diffraction grading. Or you could say, um, uh, the luminescence of um, like thin films, soap bubbles, thin film. Um, some people used color as an example because color is tied to wavelength, and that is true that it's tied to wavelength. So give you credit for that, but you can't. You might be able to make the case that your photon color was 
uh, connected to energy, and in fact it is connected to the energy, which we tie back to the frequency um, of it as a wave, but that's, a, that's another way you could describe it. But these are ones where you have actual evidence in some of the videos that we did that um, we had a wave nature, that we really needed a wave nature to explain what we saw.